Are they written? We want them written, written down, we, so we read and save on time. Where are the questions? Okay. In the next two minutes, we are done collecting them. We requested you to write while the lecture was going on. So let me read the first question. I have one question here already. Okay. I will read them. The various presenters who need to respond to them, they will note them down. And after that, we are going to have response. We'll keep them brief because of time. And then we finish. And we have our leader here. He'll give us a, a closing remarks. Okay, Cyrus, let's have those. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me have some of what we already have. The first question goes to Esther. I think she has stepped up briefly. Betty, do you want to check where Esther has gone to? Betty. Betty, please check for us where Esther is. This is her question. Cyrus, let me have them. So the first question is, please briefly recap on the PSP coaching approach. Mm -hmm. Let me have the others. So we will have her respond to that. The second question, this is what we will respond to this evening. I know you have many questions, so we may not answer all of them. Second question, please tell us what it takes for one to join the online training. Is it for free or for money? So um, this is for the health online training. Yeah, so that's for you, Dr. Eddie. Please tell us uh, what it takes for one to join the online training. Is it for free or for money? Second question, if one wants to join your group, what are the requirements? Which group is this? I'm not too sure which group, so will, you'll help us. If the best remedies to inflammation is vegetarian diet, how can we go about GMP? Yeah, genetically modified product, as well as fruits and vegetables that are grown under pesticides and uh, spray control. Good question, easy. Third, que fourth question, how much are GM plants affected? We're so worried about GM. Do we have so much GM in Uganda? Really? Okay, fourth question. What are the other sources of vitamin B12 besides animal products? That's easy. Are there possibilities of scholarship for the four month training? That's for Dr. Fesaha. <laughs> Possibility for scholarship for the four month training? The idea, uh, next question. The ideal of vegetarianism is the best way to live free from inflammation. But the challenge we have is that most products, for all, oh, most products, especially for cooking in the country, are made from animal products. The oil, that's what that means. Huh? How, how do you advise us about keeping away from them or what methods should we adopt? You mean cooking oil is made from animal product? That's that question is saying. Uh -huh. We are told that in Africa, our nature of skin pigmentation may not be affected by the ultraviolet light. The skin may not even change. So can, can we be under sunshine all day? Good one. Hydrotherapy. How does hydrotherapy work for treating migraines and cramps? Mm -hmm. Is there any danger in using sanitizers, sanitizers regularly because it is 100% alcohol? Two, 
Is it true that you patented Newstart? That's, you mean Weima? Newstart is the name Newstart patented. Mm -hmm, that it belongs to Weima. Are masks helpful or dangerous to put them on to avoid COVID-19? Good question for you, Dr. Eddy. What are your comments about COVID immunization? I think we'll need to distribute the questions. There are very many. Yeah, I'm going to summarize. We will focus on some. Yeah. Why is the government promising? Okay, promoting, you mean? Why is the government promoting cigarette smoking yet it's causing inflammation? If some, number two, if someone survived COVID-19, is it necessary to go for vaccination? You've been very attentive. The questions are so many. It means the students were alert. Why do vegetarians still die of cancer? When you eat beans, you get acid or reflux. Does it not cause inflammation? Mm -hmm. Vegetarian diets and B12. Tell us more. Plant. I honestly cannot read this one. Highlights about vitamin B12 because it's exclusively found in animal feeds. Saunas are good in raising interferons, uh, gamma. Can we conclude that a warm bath can equally be beneficial? This for Dr. Ed, it's even written so. Are there many well-documented literature, okay, documented literature concerning any possible pro-inflammatory effects of milk and milk products? Thank you, Collins from Freedom Center. What do I have to do to turn around my lifestyle if I'm addicted to animal foods? How do I start a lifestyle center in my community? Those are so many questions. So um, I know we have read, uh, I've read a few, even the responses may be too many. I mean, you may not be able to respond to all of them, but I'll give, I'll, I'll start with you, Dr. Eddie. You can pick the ones you're able to respond. I'll read maybe what you leave out. Please come. Mm -hmm. There's so many. Okay. Okay, very good. So there were so many questions there, so let me <laughs> try to, to pick up a few of them. Uh, let's talk about the vitamin B12. Okay. Mammals need vitamin B12. Now, have you seen the elephant taking uh, the vitamin B12? Have you seen the cow taking the vitamin B12? What do they do? Vitamin B12 is naturally in the soil. So when the cow is eating the grass, it not only eats grass, but sometimes it grabs a piece of dirt, and that's the way that the cow ends with vitamin B12. So there was an interesting study that was done. There's a, 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 a subgroup of Muslims in Iran with our, which are total vegetarians. And scientists went to, check, went to check them, and they found out that their vitamin B12 was fine, and they were puzzled. Where do these people are taking vitamin B12 if they're not taking vitamin B12 pills? Well, it ended up being that they were not washing their vegetables correctly. <laughs> and they were eating that with the vitamin B12. I don't recommend you do that method, okay? <laughs> I recommend you wash your vegetables well, okay? So what you need to do, you need to find a good source of vitamin B12. And that was another question. I'm going to link it to that one. They were asking, you know, what are other sources of vitamin B12? So vitamin B12, you need to either consume it in animal products, and animal products have it because vitamin B12 is found in bacteria-rich foods. That's what uh, animal products are. So another source is going to have to be to take pills of vitamin B12. How much do you need? You need about 1,000 micrograms of vitamin B12 per week. 
So one pill of vitamin B12 of a thousand micrograms, that's more than enough. Unless you have a stomach condition or some other more serious thing, you may need a little bit higher that amount. You have in your liver between three to five years of reserve of vitamin B12. So it's not like, like tomorrow you're going to go deficient. No, you know, it takes years. But it is a dangerous deficiency. So you do need to make sure you are taking vitamin B12. And if you're following a full vegetarian diet for some time, I would advise you to go to a laboratory and request that they check your vitamin B12 just to make sure that your plan is working. You may be thinking, oh, I'm taking this or that, and it may not be working. Therefore, it's a good idea to check to make sure your plan is working. So this vitamin B12 is necessary for your nervous system. So beware of that. People that take medication for gastritis and reflux and so forth, they are at high risk for vitamin B12, even if they eat animal products. Because you need enough acid in your stomach in order to absorb the vitamin B12. But if you take those pills, you're actually going to block the acid and therefore you are not going to be able to absorb the vitamin B12. You're going to need the, the injection type of vitamin B12. So beware of that. Now, in certain people, well, in most, most of us generate some B12 in our colon. But there is a subgroup of people that are able to pass some of that vitamin B12 into your small intestine, and then you have enough vitamin B12 like that. But that is a subgroup of people. That is not on everybody. So don't just think, oh, that's going to happen to me, because that can be dangerous, okay? So make sure that you're taking some vitamin B12 if you're going to go and switch your diet like that. Okay. Sound like what? Okay. Okay. Let, 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 let me deal with that. So, so uh, there's a question here. So, so how come there's vegetarians that end up with cancer? That's a, that's a good question. Well, the reality is that we live in a great controversy, yes or no? In which there is that, you know, fight between, you know, uh, Satan wants your heart and God wants your heart and, you know, who is going to end up winning that great controversy? And sometimes God may allow things to happen to us. Remember in the book of Job? But, you know, the Bible says that you are never going to go through something unless God knows that you're able to go victorious about it with his help. So some people are going to end up with cancer, you know, in this great controversy, maybe part of the negotiations. Satan says, I'm going to give him cancer. God says, okay, go for it. We know that he's, you know, he's going to come to me and, and he's going to get his strength. This is the type of life that, that we live. But I can assure you, many of the cancers that we see, you can actually trace them to something, you know. Certain behaviors, lack of sleep, um, the wrong types of foods, and so forth. So don't increase the risk of these diseases. Don't think that you are some sort of superman and, you know, these things will never happen to me and so forth. We need to live our lives in a way that, as it says in, in Corinthians, that glorifies God. Yes or no? So ask the question, is this what I'm doing glorifying God or not? It's a very simple question, yes or no? So therefore, study what glorifies God and therefore do that. 
And in that way, you are not having that spirit of revelry, but rather you're living a life to glorify God. And this is in all aspects in our lives, you know. So we need to have that type of life. Then the question was, what's with the excess melanin that the people in Africa have? Isn't that protective against, uh, you know, uh, skin damage and so forth? Yes and no. Yes, it does have tremendous protection against excess sunlight, but too much still can damage your skin. And you will see that people that have to work outside, you know, the whole day, you will see how their skin gets more wrinkly. You, you age faster due to the inflammation and radicals. So, yes, you have some protection, but don't overabuse of that. Too much can be harmful. So, if because of your work you need to be outside hours and hours, you need to find some protection. You need to have a hat. You need to have, you know, a sunblock or something to protect because that excess sunlight, you can end up with a cancer. It's possible to do that. So you need to protect your skin from too much sunlight. Okay. Genetically modified foods, that's a very good question. Let me explain to you this in the following way. Genetically modified foods are something relatively new, okay? Uh, they haven't done this for hundreds of years, you know? So, personally, I don't like that they're, you know, modifying these things, but that's the, you know, the world that we live in. Now, the research is not very clear. So think about this way. Let's say we have a wall here with all the research we have about animal products. This one is very solid. There is plenty of research that shows that that excess animal product consumption causes all kinds of health problems. Even um, you go to people that are not Adventists, they're talking about these things. Yes or no? Even the newspapers that are secular, they're talking about these things. The, the research is very, very solid about this. Let's have this, the next wall. In this wall, we have genetically modified foods. See, the research is not very clear. I cannot show you. Look, this is like super definite evidence. That's why they still sell these things, okay? If there was super solid research that this is not good, they will ban these things the next day, okay? So, many people don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. So, personally, I like to decrease those GMOs as, as much as I, you know, potentially can, but I'm not fanatic, you know, oh, if it's GMO, I'm not going to eat it and so forth. Not necessarily. The research is not that solid. What we have found out is that some people actually react not necessarily to the GMO product, but to the products that they use to raise those products, such as this Roundup or glyphosate. So some people have issues when they consume these type of things. So number one, learn how to wash properly your vegetables and fruits. I'm going to tell you an, a fast, a, an excellent resource. That resource is called nutritionfacts.org. Nutrition and then facts as in F-A-C-T-S. Nutritionfacts.org. Save that page in your favorites. That page is run by an, a doctor, a friend of mine. We actually are co-authors in a nutrition book. His name is Michael Greger, and he does a fantastic job at reading the scientific literature and summarizing those findings into a three to five minute video that is for the general public so anybody can understand and um, uh, put their insecticides. 
and he has some very good research there showing you the best methods that you should use to clean your vegetables and so forth to decrease dramatically. And lastly, if you worry about GMOs, be very worried about animal products. See, when you see the level of toxicity in, um, in vegetables regarding sex size and so forth, it's actually quite low. But a cow that is next to the field where they're doing the putting in sex size and things, does the cow eat only one blade of grass his whole life? How much he eats? Millions and millions. So the little insecticide that was there, when they eat that, the cow has tremendous levels of toxicity secondary to the huge volume of foods they eat. So again, if you worry about these GMOs and insecticides, don't worry much about the vegetable side of things. Worry about the animal side of things. That's where you find tremendous concentrations of these toxicities. This, it makes feedback if you take the microphone there. It makes feedback. Oh, okay. Uh, someone asked about hydrotherapy. Ooh. It's referring to Oh, PSP. Okay. For, for migraine and for cramps, uh, I'm assuming menstrual cramps, I don't know. But any congestion from your upper body, headache, migraine, sinus headache, lung congestion, uh, abdominal congestion, which is like indigestion, uh, inflammation in the prostate for men or in the uterus for women uh, before the menstrual cycle, if you do a hot food bath minimum 10 minutes but 10 to 30 minutes a what hot food bath what is the temperature for hot food bath in celsius or fahrenheit what is hot huh loud you forgot who was here yesterday 40 degrees Celsius, so it has to be as hot as you can tolerate. Unless you're diabetic, you need to be careful. Uh, or anyone with no sensitivity, with, you know, they cannot feel. But hot food bath, remember to keep the head cold. So you put a washcloth that's cold on your head. You sit down, you relax, and you put nice music. and. Uh, the, the, the more you cover, so try to go all the way to the knee. So a deep bucket with hot water, stay there. What's going to happen to the blood vessels in your legs? They're going to dilate and they're going to need more volume of blood. Where is this blood going to come from? Where's the volume going to come from? From the rest of your body. So the congestion is going to go down. So it's great for headache. And remember to drink a lot of water, okay? Half your weight in water. Okay, anyway, that's, the, that's another class for hydro. And then someone wants me to recap the PSP, so the four months of uh, laughter coaching in one minute. Okay, the first P is what? Problem. You need to find the cause, and then you need to change conditions change unhealthful lifestyle habits and then assist nature very good so you're gonna brainstorm for solutions those are the p and the s and the the other p is the process which is actually the process and the coaching uh, relationship which is a friendship relationship if they're Muslims they don't believe in Jesus you don't have to tell them I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you about Jesus the way the truth and the life you can say okay we're gonna define what's your vision where do you want to be because you're gonna restore this person you're gonna be helping this person to be restored to a better person to the original person that God had in mind when God created this person remember Eve Adam okay so he had someone perfect in mind 
a kind internal and external. So the brain, the emotional, the physical, the social aspect, the whole being, okay? So that's the way. What's the vision? Okay, we want to get there. And then how do I get there? By believing the truth. By believing what? What is the truth? We're going to make a plan based on the truth. What is the truth? The main truth of all truths. God is love and he has a perfect plan for us to prosper, to be in good health. So that's how do I get there? So you, can, you need to make a plan to get to your vision. Number two, so Jesus says, I am the way back to because we're lost. So he's the way and then he's the truth. Because he demonstrates that God is love. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Okay? And then the last one is the life. What is the life? Step by step. Little by little. I cannot walk one kilometer, but you can walk around the corner. Maybe little by little. You start little by little. That's the life. Contemplate for those who believe in Christ. The life of Jesus. How long? Every day. How long? One thoughtful hour. When? At what time? In the morning. Surrender all your plan, and then he's going to help you for the day. That's the life, and that's going to give you victory. Not only we think we need to ask Jesus to help us in our spiritual life, and we don't ask him to be the one leading our health life, our physical salvation. So we are going to be saved physically, also mentally, also spiritually. So we're not just spirits like ghosts, right? We're flesh and blood and spirit, okay? A living soul. So that's the PSP. Oh, I think I did more than one minute. And then... Oh, uh, Okay, okay, okay. The, okay, the health program. Okay, I'm going to mention something about New Start. Uh, the acronym New Start, remember, there's not only eight uh, life principles. There's more than eight, but the main eight, which is New Start, all you have to do is write NE and then W Start, and you have no problems. The brand name New Start all together has been registered, but there's no problem. You can write new and start. Or you can use celebrations, or you can make your own acronym with the eight principles. You can add all, another principle like purity of mind, purity of conscience. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's the principles, um, but the name, yes, it is registered. So there's a question asking if it's registered. Um, Okay, the health program is in Weimar. It's a four-month health evangelism program. How long? Four months. Very, and if Esther, you can ask Gladys, if I say it's very intensive, it is very intensive. It's very intensive. You, you start at 6 in the morning every day, and you finish about 8.30 p.m. every day. On Sabbath, you rest, uh, and maybe you have two or three or four hours to do your laundry and your errands on Friday. But other than that, the re from Sunday through Friday, it's training, 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 community work, knocking on doors. We do TCI. We do coaching. You have to complete hours. You have to complete massage hours. You have to complete hydrotherapy hours. We do community programs. We do the depression and recovery, uh, anxiety recovery community program on Tuesday night. We do on Thursday night diabetes undone program. We do another community program that is called Live Long, Live Strong, based on the book of Daniel. Uh, and then we're giving Bible studies. It's, we're busy, 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 busy. It's very intensive. I've been working there since 2015. I did the program in 2014. Uh, Pastor Don McIntosh is the one who started the health uh, evangelism program. He was working for AFCO. He was working in the Michigan conference and then he came to, to Weimar area 
And when he was working for AFCO, uh, he got actually fired. And he tells the story, so I'm not talking anything bad about He tells the story, but it was God leading him to start this program. And then AFCO helped Weimar Institute actually to survive because they were, they were in, in a very bad financial situation. You can find the story online. It's very... God was actually doing something great, and he keeps doing. I've been there since 2012, and I've, I've seen we didn't have a nursing school. Now the college, the university is accredited. Uh, uh, Pastor Ted Wilson, he has been there several times. Uh, Elder Mark Finley, they're part of the board, actually. And it, it's a support ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So we have the four-month program. And now we have, since 2020, we started the health online program. That one you can do, you don't have to go to Weimar. You need to partner with a church because you're going to have to do community programs, actually do it in your local churches because that's the whole point of the health evangelism program. And you need to do, you can do it in four, six months or one year, the maximum time is 18 months, all right? Our dream, and I'm talking for Gladys and for uh, our sister, Betty, because now we have nine students in Nairobi doing the, the, the health online. Because we go around doing training called Powered Up. We do it in America, and we have done several or a few in Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, some countries, not a lot, uh, which is 10-day training, very intensive as well. Uh, hydrotherapy, you can actually practice. Massage, you can actually practice. So in 10 days, we do um, training for churches, whoever wants to come. So we have a group of 40 or 60 people that are actually very interested in medical missionary work. So we, we had a training last year, and after that, we end up with nine wanting to do the health online. So right now, nine students from Nairobi, they're doing the health online. And our dream is that if we get a good group of people from this division, which is uh, all these countries and the Central East, right? Um, that we will be able to present to the board in Weimar and ask for a good discount. Because we re I'm from Mexico, so we have pesos, Mexican pesos, that cannot compete with American dollars, right? And we recognize that it's the same for other countries. And right now we have a group of 100 people um, taking the course in Asia. Uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, all those countries, Philippines. And there, it's a group of 100. So they got a very good package. And I believe God can do it for, for us too here now. And I say us because I think now I'm part of you. So this is our dream. So if you're interested in this, talk to Pastor Quisito. Talk to Gladys or Betty. I don't know. Somehow, we, I think God can make this happen. I think he wants to make this happen. You saw the girl that came today. This was a divine appointment. We didn't know each other from before. And she's actually very interested in training. And she wants to start a school. So I think God is doing something for Uganda. I, I believe so. So praise God for that. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Dr. Eddie. We have come to, we cannot finish. The questions were so many. You are a lovely people to have this afternoon. So we have now come to the end of today's session. Thank you for your engagement, active engagement. And I want to invite our host, Pastor Kizito, to finalize and allow us to all leave and uh, give the closing remarks. And the books, all those who need books, Betty is right here. Shh, you will see her, but after sunset. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's her name? I'm coming. I'm not coming. Hmm? I'm there. Okay. 
Can we thank Gladys in a special way? Thank you so much for leading us this afternoon and evening. Um, the different sessions that we have had. Uh, and we thank you for everything. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are coming to the close of today. I begin with the books. They have talked about 15,000. Uh, huh? Minister of Healing and Lee Academic Busters. So we boost, eh? Busters, fine. You know, <clears throat> Minister of Healing at ABC here, I think it is 20,000, 30,000. Huh? 24,600 at ABC. So you are getting it at a lower price. Uh, those of you who can remember Dr. Andoa, who was, she was once the Minister of Health before Dr. Rugunda. Is there anyone who knows that lady? Christine Andoa. That lady, she's not an Adventist, but she's, I think, a Pentecostal. I don't know how she came to know about this book. She came looking for that book, Minister of Healing. So she came here when she was a Minister of Health. She came. She didn't know the book, how it looks like. She tried to explain until when she talked a number of things, people pulled out that brown book. And then when they brought it up, she picked it and kissed the book. She said, this is the book. She kissed it and put it in her chest. And then she said, you Adventists, what are you doing with these books here? Should I go on the TVs and I make announcements? And then she said, I wish every doctor in Uganda read this book. One time I went to this man, Dr. Sari of Dama. I went there. I don't know who told him probably I am. The man preached to me 15 minutes. And she told me she cannot become an Adventist because she will, be, she will become full like we are. She's making money out of our what? Our books. When I came back, I, told, I talked to some of the medical workers and told you people, you have cheated us. Because if you health workers really read the materials we have, you can make a big difference for the lives and for your life. Please. So please access this book. We have a lot of materials and tools. The other Sabbath, I was with the editors of Mountain Olive, the whole weekend from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, training them as editors. And I took materials, tools which they can use. A lot of tools which I found out. And I told them, look here, this church is not short of materials. A lot that can make you to be what you are. And they really appreciate it. So this is one of the tools that we need as healthy workers. Please access it when we finish here. Then, uh, secondly, I want to thank God. I want to thank God for this uh, training that we have had for the two days or three days. Why do I thank God? As they have already given you testimony, this is God's arrangement. We've told you the stories. But another story, it was not easy. After we have, I was done doing with these people, I was not very sure whether I would have it. I did it by faith. Because I did, not, I did not plan for it, I did not have a budget as a department. So, the union was willing to help me in terms of accommodation and the meals for day and just a few people. But I said, I'm going ahead and I called a few people. Uh, I want to thank Elder Nariali. He gave me some little money. But mainly, Dr. Fesaha. So what I did was to call my boss. And I told him, Dr. I need this. 
Because when I informed my leaders, we are not very sure. I wrote to, to, to Kenya, to, to the Union President, East African Union. I wrote to him, I wanted to know more about this because I had not known them. I told the graduates, I want a concept. Tell me who you are, what you do, what is your relationship with the church? And what have you done in Kenya so that we know? She wrote to me. So I wrote to the president. I copied my president here and my secretary. So the president there replied and told me, Pastor, these people have done great work for Kenya. Please go ahead. So I called Dr. Fesaha, Dr. Fesaha. And so Dr. Fesaha has really helped us so much to make sure this program, he put in over $700 to make sure that this program happens. So I want to thank him so much, and I want to thank him for the support of the ministry to make sure. And he told me, he was coming here for, number, for quite a number of other things, he told me I will be around. So this program, we want to thank God for that. Then I want to thank Betty. I have already talked about her. I want to thank Gladys for, what, for all that she has done to make sure... These people, uh, the reason why I, we did this, they were going, I learned they were going to Kenya and Ethiopia. And this is the only time that we had, I said, whatever happens, you must come to Uganda. That's why tomorrow they are going very early because they are going to Kenya. So I told them, please pass Uganda through Uganda. That's why you see things were moving uh, somehow awkwardly. Uh, but uh, we thank God they are here. Then, um, the call to action, I think we have to call it action. We, do you think you, how many of you would be interested really to register and start to study? Don't think about money, but how many of you would be willing to register, study, and become medical missionaries? All right, you see? Right. When you have the will, God will provide the what? The means. We just have to have that faith. As God has done it today, he will do it. So, uh, maybe you will bring, you will come and uh, we can talk to Madame Lou too. We, those who, who, who need to study. Then we will get to know the details on how we can go about it. Hmm? We can know the details on how to go about it. But I've heard where Esther says that someone can register on behalf of the church. A church like this one, Kampala Central Church, Ereda, you can register one person and sponsor one person. Such as that he becomes what? He goes, he studies, then he can come back and train more, more people. So if we can have a number of churches in Uganda, so uh, my counterparts, let us identify some churches that can support these people. You know, let me tell you, me being here, as you see me, to be able to become a, a pastor, I was supported by Najan Ankumbi SDA Church. They identified me when I was a younger man. You know, I had the interest in the mission, in evangelism. And the church supported me. It is the pastor Kakembo who drove me to, to, to Bugema the day before he went to America. And he left me there. So you can support people to become what? Missionaries. And they can help the worker to grow. So, Ereda, do you think Ereda, Ereda Lutu, do you think Kanyanya can support someone? Yeah. Madam Lutu, work with Ereda Lutu. Ereda Lutu is very supportive of Madam Lutu. Let me report to him. Eh? Sometimes he even refuses him to, to, to ask for church money. Eh? He refused his children to be paid by church money. Let me report to him. He said, For me, I will pay for my children's school fees. Eh? This man, you see him. He buy, even he purchases a vehicle for, her, for the wife. You drive that, he can't go, go and do God's work. We need men like 
like him and you can see he's seated here since morning supporting the what the wife you know he supports her to drive that pickup you can see and she goes around the conference the church doesn't have enough resources so we need that all right so those of you who are interested let us get the names and then we see the way forward all right i have done that one um now because of time i want to appreciate you also members i want to appreciate uh, the rest of us who came to participate how many of you are saying we have really benefited god bless you i want to thank the those who came on friday those who came from up country may god bless you and uh, reward you much more uh, we will be finishing tomorrow the rest of us and then uh, we'll have a meeting with my counterparts to forge a way forward but now i want to invite our leader pastor fesa to come and say a few things then oh okay you want and i request the ladies who are prepared something to be ready hmm? Right. Let us first welcome our pastor to come and uh, do some little activity here before we conclude. Praise the name of the Lord Church once again. Uh, we want to thank the Lord for such dynamism in the body of Christ, the church. As this is taking place, also something else is taking place. I want to invite the elders present to come up front and we welcome the souls that have accepted Jesus Christ through three ABN telecasts and messages in the gospel role that has been uh, running. Uh, uh, the ladies up here, Esther, they have a paper they are going to pass around. So those of you who are saying you want to register for training, so the paper is going to come around. Let us write our names on that paper. Thank you. We want to thank God that in the Bible it is said, in heaven there is jubilation over one sinner who repents and comes to the Lord. But as a church, we are blessed to have ten souls that have surrendered to Christ. What do we have to say? Amen. Amen. So I want to request um, Elder Mposa, or Elder, first Elder, please. Uh, when you read your, the names, uh, you will come and you receive your certificate. And we are praying that God blesses your Christian journey until Jesus comes back. Make sure, I just want to give you one text which is found in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 which says that you should not lose your faith for it carries with it a great reward. So look unto Jesus Christ the author and finisher of your faith and you will never fail but you receive the crown of life.
let us have uh, these members ushered into the church. The elders will do the needful. Okay. Yes, I have uh, Kanakuria Robert. When you, you're ready, you just come up front quickly. Yes, Kanakuria Robert, you're welcome. You can come and uh, join us here and be welcome. Then I also have uh, Chisache Esther. Esther Chisache. Chisache Esther. Then or both Alfred. Or both Alfred. Naka is a Dorothy. Naka is a Dorothy. Nakabale Vincent. Segawa Arnold. Nambi Janat. Kabengano Lyombia Namingu Kosi Namingu Kosi Flavia Nakangu Flavia Then lastly Nakaizi Dorothy Nakaiza Dorothy Nakaiza Dorothy Is she with us? you to come up front here so that you receive a word of prayer for you. When you have a certificate, come up front here and um, come up front here. Before we receive the final benediction, we'd like to pray for them, to commit them in the hands of God. I already told you that look unto Jesus Christ, the author and finish of your faith. Never give up until you make it to heaven. As a church, let us pray for these people. Father in heaven, before you are your children. They have just accepted you as their personal savior. We therefore commit them into your hands that you lead them all through. Bless them to only focus unto you. And may you grow them into the stature of Jesus Christ. At the end, Father, may we all be ushered into your kingdom when we are victors. Bless us and abide with us, for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. For this special group, I want to request that... The elders, you pick just one. You take notes of the, the addresses and whatever, and you are to do the nurture for that candidate. So elders, you take one. Elders, please just take a candidate. <laughs> and it does quickly pick a candidate. I want to see that. Like one is going to take two. 
We praise God for the new souls that have been uh, one and who have joined the family of the Adventist Church globally. So I want to invite uh, Dr. Fesaha, please. Uh, can we wait a bit so that we finish up uh, this function? Let me invite Dr. Fesaha to come and they say a few words as we close. Can you hear me now? Okay. Good evening to you. It's my pleasure now to make the closing remark for this co comprehensive health ministry workshop in Uganda Union. Many of you have been asking why do we need this workshop, this seminar? Why do we need it? Why? Why do we need this, this workshop and seminar? Yes, I see some hand. As you know, according to World Health Organization, about 60 to 70 percent of deaths are caused by lifestyle diseases. What are those lifestyle diseases? Uh, hypertension, diabetes, malatus, cancer, chronic heart diseases, and osteoarthritis. Are they preventable? Yes, 100%. Most of them are preventable. Most of them are preventable. That's the Seventh-day Adventist Church emphasize and believe that if the church members catch the message, the health message and leave it, catch it and leave it, enjoy it and share it with the others will prevent all these sufferings and the chronic lifestyle diseases. Obesity is a risk factor for hypertension, heart diseases, diabetes, malatus, and cancer. We can prevent obesity. If we follow the healthy lifestyle, the good healthy lifestyle, that's the whole emphasis for, for the last, we've been here for the last three days, on Friday, Saturday, and I'm told that other members will be staying around tomorrow. Tomorrow we are developing the action plans. Tomorrow. It's good. You stay behind and develop the action plan. That what you'll be doing when you go back. This, this, this seminar workshop is more or less like a training of trainers. That's why... East Central Africa Division, Health Ministry Department was entrusted to assist the Uganda Union Health Ministry Director. As, as he shared, pastors have shared with us that when he tried to say, I will organize a workshop, I said, that's fine. It's a good start. So I hope this will not be the end. We'll have maybe workshop after workshops until 
everybody, all the church members catch the message. Not only catching, live it, enjoy it, the benefit of the healthy lifestyle and share it with others. So we want you to be active witness to others. Not only to our church members, to others, to the public also, the community at large. This meeting has been, workshop has been successful because there are many people who participated, who facilitated this, this workshop. I really want to thank Dr. Eddie for coming all the way from U.S. to come and participate. I'm sure everybody has joined his, his uh, pre presentation. I want to thank, thank you very much. I want to thank also Esther coming from Wema University Institute for the presentation. Well done. Thank you very much. And Gladys, thank you very much for organizing the team. Of course, this meeting will be unless uh, if you had not come, what will happen? Yeah, thank you for coming. I know to come here all the way from the, from the fields and stay here for three days as, as, as demanding. Thank you for coming. And I hope you'll take it home. Not only take it, I hope once you develop your action plan, you will achieve, achieve the goal you have made. And I also want to thank the Uganda Union for allowing Pastor Chizitu to uh, and have a, a conference, a workshop like this. It's very important. It's very important. The church has to move with research. And I really like uh, Dr. Eddie was talking about research and research, research. If you have seen it, some of the research has been done regarding diet and nutrition. You see, health message is not nutrition, diet and nutrition only. It's broader than that. Are we together? It's broader than that. It's much broader. There's exercise, there's rest, there's trust in God, temperance. In fact, that's the big issue. We have a big, big issues in the church. Alcohol use, tobacco use, and drug use among the, among the young, young people. So there are many, many. So it's not only diet and nutrition we are focusing. We have to focus the whole, uh, the way we live. Lifestyle means the way we live, the style we live, sleep. It covers others. It, it also includes integrity, how, how much honest we are for ourselves and the community at large. So three days is not really enough. We need more time. And they, I will invite you also about online, online program. I don't want to make a promise now, but ECD Health Ministry Department will be happy to assist once you have enough, enough number of, I think, participants. I think we'll be happy to assist also financially. <laughs> because this has to be ongoing program. This, what we call the continued medical education. That's the only way we could have our church will be on a cutting edge. Research. A research. A research. It's my honor. As I open this meeting or this workshop, it's also my honor again to declare and close this meeting officially. May God bless you and have a safe trip home. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, doctor is an ordained minister. Pastor, you didn't know. 
I think you, I wish you knew you would have invited him to baptize. Now, before we really have the closing prayer, and I think I'll invite the pastor, who will be the one to close, but we are remaining with the two things. I want to invite our ladies, uh, Dr. Juliana and uh, Madame Lutu, CUC Health Director and the Health Director here to come and do what they have prepared. Then from there we shall have a word of appreciation from the local church. But again, as uh, Dr. Fesa has mentioned, we want to thank our facilitators. Thank you so much for coming all the way from U.S. and uh, putting in some resources yeah, to come to us. Some two people I had not thank. Ibra. Ibra, can you please stand up and come here? Ibra is a brother to Gladys. He decided to drive these people from Nairobi up to here. And tomorrow is driving them back. The entire team, they are going to go back driving up to Nairobi. And this is the man. So please uh, pray for them and pray for him so that he drives these wonderful people great men and women uh, so that they reach safely. Then our daughter Lisa Lisa our daughter Lisa who accompanied the mother you know huh? thank you so much thank you so much. Our pastors please Pastor Chisache, Pastor Chigundu thank you so much for being flexible flexible and accepting for us to have uh, this program here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And the church, may God bless you. So let me uh, invite, let me invite the pastor to come and give this handover. So they read the name, they give you, and you hand over this appreciation. Yeah, you read the name, and the one, and then the pastor gives out. Um, to our dear guests, we are very grateful for the ministry that you, ha you are serving in and for coming here to share with us this knowledge. We have prepared through the church and uh, union very small tokens. Please accept them. They come with a lot of love, gratitude, and hoping that through these you will always remember us and come back very soon. So... Um, I'll, I'll read out the guests and uh, you will come. Our di CUC director and church pastor will hand over the gifts. Our first gift will go to Dr. Ramirez. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, then uh, Dr. Fesaha, let's come up. Um, we have something for Esther. <laughs> and of course, together with Esther, we'll have something for Lizeth.
we certainly cannot forget our guests from Nairobi, Ms. Gladys. And uh, Miss Betty. Last but not least, our pilot, Ibrahim. We have something for you as well. <laughs> Members, I want to invite those. I'm going to register those who are interested in getting birth, pandemic births and Ministry of Healing, and also those who want to be part of the online training we are going to have. I'm going to pass around, and then you register. I want to invite Edana Chibinge on behalf of all of us, Edana Chibinge. Edana Chibinge to come and just give a vote of thanks. And uh, Thank you, Pastor. On behalf of my pastor, the district pastor for Kampala A, and on behalf of my pastor here, the church pastor, Pastor Chigundu Benon, and on behalf of the church, Kampala Central Church, and all these members who have come from various fields and have participated in this seminar, we feel blessed. And we wish to take this opportunity to thank the Lord for your presence here. Dr. Eddie Ramirez, Dr. Fessa, all the team, we are very grateful for what you have imparted to us. This has been really overdue. The church in Uganda is really thirsty for this information. You find everybody is doing what he wants or she wants. We are feeding the way we want. We are handling things the way we want. Maybe it's like we are not clearly knowing what to do, all of us. So when we get such opportunity, and even AFCO is in our compound now. So I've found this message in AFCO, and many of our people have started being with AFCO. And now I'm seeing more information with the research. So I'm, I'm grateful and I feel blessed, and I know everybody is, that you have been with us. Thank you for the three days, and also thank you for the Sabbath day today. We pray that the Lord continues using you and Pastor Chizito. I've not forgotten that you have linked us to our pastors and doctor and all the team from Nairobi and other places. And I believe the Uganda Union will continue now <laughs> impressing upon all the fields to do what has been done this weekend. Uh, I think I can't say so much, but there are a lot of ailments that have come up. Uh, information has been scanty. We need all this information as you have been linking us to the research to work. Many of these people are learned so they can read, they can understand, and they can get what you exactly want us to do. And I think we shall use that privilege to get where you want us to be. May God bless you as you continue to do his work, even in Kenya and beyond. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Eda. I just want to request the church we stand up, we sing one stanza, or oh, let me walk. 
with thee, my God, before we have the benediction. thank you that it has all been by your grace. We want to thank you for all stakeholders that have made this to happen. Father, you entrusted us with the messages of health. And somewhere in the world it is known that the Adventists are the people who have better lives and even longer lives. But Lord, we pray that that one should spread everywhere. As you hope us to change our lifestyles and to change the way we live. So the world can know that you, our God, you already spoke to us and you gave us the way. Father, by doing so, we believe many souls will be saved. And even we shall have longer and better lives while we wait for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. I therefore want to commit the entire church in your hands. Make us to do the needful at such a time as this, to the glory of your name and for the betterment of our health. We want to thank you for our leaders that have been here tomorrow as they prepare to travel back. Lord, I pray you prepare them good traveling masses. But I am praying for us who are staying behind that as we've committed ourselves to go into study and even to begin to live such a life, the Lord, we should really do it that we may receive the blessing that you already had sent to your church. Now we leave this place, Father, we pray, that you dismiss us with your blessings, but not from your presence. May glory and honor be upon your name, and the peace and blessings that come from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore, as we have said this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord walk and work with you. Amen.